Well, guys, um, what an honor it is. Um, anytime we get a chance to to have Dad, to have Pastor Bob come in as a, a guest speaker. And uh, this time is a little bit different from times in the past. And uh, he may say something about this uh, here in a minute, but uh, Dad is officially retired as a full-time pastor in Joshua. Yeah. And uh, actually, Glory. Glory. actually, the church was in Burleson. And uh, he may say something about that, uh, but uh, what a privilege it is to have him speak. And, and I specifically had in mind just kicking off our 2021 with some kind of word to get us going into this new year. Um, and uh, spoiler alert, some kind of word that's encouraging. And so uh, there's some notes and some an area to take notes on the back of your bulletin. Uh, if you'd like to do that, but sh would you just join me in welcoming Dad, Pastor Bob. Well, good morning. First of all, I want to say something. I love that cello. Good job, young lady. No wonder he said he didn't need a bass. I'm just kidding. Hey, good job. Love the music. Love you guys. Good to be here. And I've got an announcement to make. You're probably saying, well, I wonder if... Uh, uh, Greg's dad's going to have an encouraging word this morning. Well, the title of my message is An Encouraging Word. There we go. Or you might say it this way, A Biblical Journey of Encouragement. And the only thing that was discouraging to me as I was putting this together, uh, I just couldn't cover all the bases. So I, I, we're going to share a lot this morning on encouragement. And I hope you leave here encouraged in the most holy faith. Can someone say Amen. That's the whole premise of this message for this morning. So, uh, the title is An Encouraging Word. And when we think about encouragement, the first thing we probably think about is encouraging one another. And so, uh, there's two scriptures only that talks about encouraging one another as far as an actual quote is concerned. But the one that we're probably all most, fam all most familiar with is that old scripture says, Get to church. Get in church. Anybody know what that is without me quoting it? There it is. Not neglecting, not neglecting the matter of some, of a habit of some, but encouraging one another on all the more as you see the day drawing near. I heard that a lot growing up. Be sure and go to church, encouraging one another as you see the day drawing near. Anybody else ever heard that before? Just, oh, okay, just three of us? <laughs> now we have four, how about five, got five? Got a five, got a six, anybody got a six? All right, there we go. Uh, yeah, it's a popular uh, scripture concerning encouragement from one another. And so it's a one another scripture. But before we go any further, I want to show you, and by the way, uh, Rick back here is, is my buddy in my, because I usually have a clicker and I click my own click on the PowerPoint. So I'm going to do this or he's going to follow. I don't know how it's going to work. We'll just see if it synchronizes or not. But here we go. The first thing I want you to see is the definition of encouragement. There it is on the overhead. Encouragement is parakaleo. And so para, as you know, we get the word parallel, or going along the side, or side by side. And we find the word kaleo is to call, or to invite, to come near, come close. And so that's the, the Greek definition of the word encouragement. In, in that definition alone, we see a lot of good, yummy truths that we can meditate as we unpack this great word. Now, uh, you know, as, a, as I think about this word, uh, the, the Lord has put many things on my mind, and one of the things he might have put on your mind, during this time of social distancing and uh, staying away from folks, does the Lord put anybody on your mind? Say, I need to call them. Amen? Just as you're going down the road, you know, I just need to check up on them and see how they're doing. Amen? Hey, man, that's a good thing. That's a call of the Lord to call forth, to check on someone, just to say, how are you doing? Just to be there for somebody. It's been my experience over the years that when I do that, and the Lord puts someone on my heart, and I'm saying, I'm just going to call them up and say, how are you doing? Is everything okay? I just want you to know, I just want to find out how are you doing. And on the other end, they will say, Man, this call is providential. The timing couldn't have been better. 
And so a lot of times when we encourage someone, I just want to encourage you and say thank you. You're, you're just so awesome, and I just thought about you. been praying for you. On their end, the encouragement could even turn into a prophecy that the Lord is prophesying to them some encouragement because prophecy edifies, comforts, and exhorts. So just your call can edify, comfort, and exhort somebody, and all you had in mind was just to give them a call, find out how they're doing, what's going on. I just want to call you up and encourage you. Is that encouraging for anybody? Amen. Call me up anytime. <laughs> well, the other thing is that the encouragement does is it draws you to somebody and you just basically say not their performance not that they're a great piano player not that they're a great singer just say I believe in you I believe in you and you're, you're calling up someone next to you just to say I believe in you you're so awesome I love that cello playing but hey more than that cello playing I believe in you young lady amen that's more encouraging to her than the cello amen by the way, since Chad's sitting up on the front row, let me give you another picture. This is not just for you, Chad. Well, maybe it is just for you. <laughs> so let me give you another good definition, picture of the word encouragement. Encouragement is when someone has a dead battery on their car, and you go up with a strong battery on your car, and you hook up the jumper cables, and you go from a strong battery, and you jump their car with a weak battery, you're, that's a perfect definition in a mechanical term of the word encouragement. You drive up next to somebody, side by side, and you just are there, and your courage and your hope and your strength encourages them just by your presence. Don't say anything. Just by your presence. Can everybody say amen to that? How many would receive that when someone just comes up to you and just says, I'm just here for you. And their courage comes over to you because their strength, you feel their strength and you feel their love, you feel their uh, affection, you feel their kindness toward you. That's very encouraging. Another thing that's encouraging is just to say, draw somebody to you and say, I believe in you. I believe in you. Not what they do, not their talent, just them. Because love is one of the greatest motivations in the world too. Love believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love believes in you because the Lord believes in you. Amen? Uh, Greg, I'll never forget it, at Bethel Temple, uh, we were praying at the altar, if you remember, and the founder of that church was Pastor Charles Jones. And Charles was already in his 80s, and I was a young man in my 30s, and we, we'd come to the altar, and he'd take his hand, he'd pull me to him, he'd pull me to himself. He never said anything other than this. Bobby, I believe in you. You're doing great. And I just go, whoo, I, I just kind of float. Whoo. Pastor Jones shook my hand, and he said, I believe in you. Whoo. That's about what it did to me. I, I, don't, 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 Y'all don't look at me so serious. Amen. So another one is uh, I've always struggled, and I still do to some degree, with English grammar. Did you hear that? That's my English major wife that said amen for all you out there. She's still helping me. But uh, all the way through Texas Tech, all the way through secular school, I had such a complex because every time I'd go try to pass college grammar, I'd fail every time. So I finally ended up at Dallas Baptist College, and I'm telling my woes to this English teacher, and she stops me. She says, just stop right now. Come here. So she called me over, that's part of encouragement, called me over, looked me in the face and said, I'm believing in you, not what you can do, but I'm believing in you as an individual. And you're not only going to pass my English, my English course, you're going to make a B. And I, I turned around and said, are you talking to me? <laughs> Guess what, folks? I made a B. Hallelujah. Now, you can say all you want to, but those kind of experiences encourages you and gives you hope for all your life. It still encourages me to tell that story. I'm 74 years old. I, I should have forgotten that a long time ago. Amen? No, it's still encouraging even to this day for someone to draw you next to them because they have a strong battery and you have a weak battery and they're just saying, I'm here for you. And I believe in you. Amen? So, it reminds me 
of Galatians 6 to bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. And we bear one another's burdens many times by just being there next to them, just being there for them. And what an opportunity we have in this day and age. How many know we need some encouragement in this day and age? Praise God, with social distancing, you don't have to social distance with the phone, you don't have to social distance with a text, and you don't have to say something, you don't even have to quote a scripture. You just say, hey, checking up on you, just want you to know I love you and I believe in you. And you're giving somebody else courage, you're giving somebody else hope for tomorrow. Amen. So the scripture then, as we follow up, Hebrews 10, 23, uh, says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Well, who is the he who promised is faithful? We've been talking about encouraging one another, but where does that courage come from? Where does that power come from? Where does that strength come from? I call it empowering grace. There's a source there, and it's from the Lord himself. Can someone say amen? And so from the text we can find, or through the scriptures, I found there's about 486 times that the scripture uses the word, the God of, the God of, like the God of peace, or the God of hope, or, or the God, and then I found one that I'd never seen. Here I am, a guy 74 years old, been preaching almost for 50 years. I've never seen this. And if you've seen it, go ahead and tell me you've seen it, but I won't believe you. Anyway. I ran into a scripture I'd never seen. He is the God of encouragement. Praise God. The courage comes from him. And he's the God of encouragement. And probably the two scriptures that was my favorite before I ran into that was probably he's the God of all hope. Uh, Romans, the 15th chapter, verse 13. It's not on your overhead, but it's one of my favorite scriptures. May the God of hope fill you with all peace and, peace and joy and believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may abound in hope. One of my favorite scriptures. But another favorite scripture that uses the God of, that ties another scripture, and I, uh, stay with me, I'm going to quote from 1 Thessalonians uh, 5, verse 9. Next slide. There we go. This is the second scripture that uses the word uh, encouraging one another. But before we get there, let's tie in those two scriptures. Because all of us are encouraged when, you, when we say, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. And I will take joy in the God of, what? My salvation. Amen? Isn't that a good scripture? You want some joy? I will rejoice in the Lord and I'll take joy in the God of my salvation. And you take that scripture and combine it for 1 Thessalonians and where it uses the second time, it uses encouraging one another. And here's what we have. God, who has, who has not destined us for wrath, but to attain salvation through Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. Praise God. That's just another way to encourage one. When you tell somebody about the finished work of salvation and that you believe it with all, you heart, with all your heart and you live for that every day, the finished work of the cross, it encourages people. They want to know what you believe. Amen? Now, Greg introduced me a while ago as Pastor Bob, and so they call me at the other church, PB, Pastor Bob. And some of them call me Propitiation Bob because I believe in propitiation. And this scripture is pretty close to defining what propitiation is. Uh, this propitiation comes from 1 John 4.10. This is love, not that we love God, but he loved us and gave his son to be the propitiation for our sins. So you see the word wrath up, up there. But the Lord Jesus Christ absorbed our sins, absorbed our iniquities, absorbed everything, and as a result, he absorbed the wrath of God and the judgment of God so that in place of that we might receive his favor as sons and daughters. How many know that's good news? I, I think J.I. Packer says it best. He says the gospel is adoption 
uh, through propitiation. And so that's just another way to say the same thing. For God of my salvation, the God who has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live for him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you're doing. And that particular scripture is centered around the gospel, centered around good news, centered around propitiation. How many know we need some good news in this day and age? Amen? So, next, uh, number one, encouragement comes from one another. Two, encouragement comes, here it is, from the God of encouragement. And here's a scripture. Go for it. Romans 15, 4. Ta-da! All right, I'm going to ask you again. How many knew that that scripture was there and it said God of encouragement? Don't, don't be fussing. Don't be, don't be fibbing to me. That's what I thought. Not many of us. But isn't it great? May the God of endurance and encouragement whoo, grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus that whether you may be with one voice, glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he calls the Lord there the God of encouragement. Well, next, uh, we find in the Old Testament that same God was always with us. There's no social distancing with the God of encouragement. This is one of my favorite scriptures. If you've ever gone through the blues, if you've ever had the dark night of the soul, if you've ever felt like uh, you're alone and no one knows or no one cares, and you feel like God is on vacation, he shut the place down, and you're, he's not around, this is your scripture. It's been my scripture too. Amen? The God of encouragement says, you hem me in about him. The Lord, you hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is too high. I cannot attain it. Isn't that a wonderful scripture? Praise God. I remember one time, one of the lowest times in my life that I went through, some might call it the blues. It was worse than the blues. <laughs> I would call it the dark night of the soul. That was my scripture. Because the God of encouragement said, I'm with you. I'm in front of you. I'm behind you. There's no social distancing with me. My hand is upon you. Isn't that a good scripture? And so you can just, when you're going through the blues, just turn to that one and say, this is the God of encouragement, even in the Old Testament. Praise God. It gets better. It gets better. Next to us, New Testament believers, here's what he promises. John 14, 6. John 14, 6. And I'll ask the Father, and he'll give you another helper. There's another word, paracleto. It's kin to the one we're talking about to be with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it never sees him or knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. How many know the God of encouragement lives in you by the Holy Spirit? Isn't that good news? It's always with you. We'll never leave you, never forsake you. Always there to encourage you. Always there to give you hope. Always there to, to, find, to give you joy. Praise God. Praise the Lord. So, number one, encouragement comes from one another. Number two, encouragement comes from the God of encouragement. And number three, encouragement comes from the encouragement of the scriptures. And my wife would say to me earlier, now, you don't have to put encouragement of the scriptures. Just say it comes from scriptures. But I quoted the scriptures, sweetheart. I quoted the Lord on this one. Amen. Praise God, from the ESV version, straight from the Bible. Just wanted to tell them, isn't it funny? So, now go back, go back, go back. There we go. Encouragement comes from the encouragement of the scriptures. And you say, where do you get that, Pastor Bob? Well, I got it from the scripture in Romans 15, 4 from the ESV Bible. Go to that one. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction that through encouragement and through the encouragement of scriptures, we might have hope. Got to give you a little testimony how this works. And then I'm going to ask you, and here, I'm going to give you a homework here and be thinking about this. I'm going to ask you to quote me your favorite scripture. Now, it don't take a long time. Just speak it out in just a few minutes. So hold tight. Don't get too nervous. So the year was 1978. I needed encouragement. 
we were between churches. We, I didn't have a pastor at that time. I was going, to, my wife and I were together, and we were going, I was going to Dallas Baptist College working on my degree. And I said, oh, boy, I'm just so down. I, I, my, my hope, my vision for ever being a pastor, it was gone. Uh, we needed food at the time. We were that close to not having anything. We needed some peanut butter. <laughs> when I don't have any peanut butter, it's pretty bad. <laughs> we were pretty needy. I didn't have a pastor to talk to, so I said, I'm going to talk to my New Testament, New Testament professor. He's the most godly man I know at this time in my life. So I stood up after the class was over. I'm waiting in line to talk to him because I needed some help. I, I, was, I was down. I needed some hope. And about that time, to my right, I, I could touch this lady, this young lady. To my right, a, 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 an Oriental lady said to me, I have a word for you. I had, this is a large class. I didn't know who she was. She said, I have a word for you. I said, oh, okay. Yes, okay. And then she quoted Habakkuk 3.17. Though the fig tree shall not blossom, nor fruit be on the vine, and the producer of the olives shall fail, and the fields shall yield no fruit, the flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. Man, she read my mail. She didn't know me from Adam. And the Lord read my mail through her. And I said, whoa, <laughs> boy, that's, a, that's very encouraging. That's providential that the Lord provided through a person that I didn't know some encouragement. And I said, thank you. Thank you so much. She said, I have another word for you. How many of you know, I would say, this, I'm, I'm all ears. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm ready to listen. And she said, and she quoted Habakkuk 2, 3. The first one, I didn't have any food. She, she quoted a scripture about that. Secondly, I'd lost my vision. She didn't know that. The Lord knew it through her. So then she quoted Habakkuk 2, 3. For still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. It seems slow, but wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Amen. I went away from there so encouraged because someone just wanted to come next to me and give me a scripture of encouragement. And so I just love scriptures of encouragement that give us courage, gives us hope, gives us love, and gives us faith to go on. And so here's a few of them that came to my mind. Ephesians 6, 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. John 14, 27, peace I leave with you and I peace I give you. Not as the world gives, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Or Psalms 27, 1, oh, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Another great scripture. Or Psalms 56, 3, when I'm afraid, I put my trust in you, Lord. Praise God. In God, whose word I praise. In God. I put my trust in you, Lord. Our 2 Timothy 1, 7. For the Spirit of God gave us not, has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and love and a sound mind. Praise God. Our Jeremiah 29. Y'all know, y'all know this one. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, says the Lord. Or Joshua 1, 9. And when you're going through and you need some courage, always read Joshua chapter 1. Be strong and courageous. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Keep looking to Jesus as the author and finish of your faith. Hebrews 12, 1. So these scriptures in Romans 8, 28, uh, we know that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. And we go on, Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And, and of course, I've already quoted you my favorite it's a Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you all with joy and peace and believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. 
Praise God. So now, what's your favorite scripture? Say it out loud. Huh? Amen. Man, you did good. And the short version of that is what? Lest the Lord builds a house, what? You build in vain. I want the Lord to build my house. Amen. I mean, no, that's encouraging. Somebody else. All right. What, Greg? Absolutely. That's a favorite. We know that God works in all things for the good, for those who love the Lord. Somebody else. Okay. Yeah. Amen. And let me tell you about that one, guys. The word thanksgiving is in there. Don't worry about anything, but in everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. You know why thanksgiving's put in there? Because when you put thanksgiving in there, the Lord is magnified as bigger and large and in charge and not your worries. Isn't that cool? How many know worries and concern can be large and in charge of your life? So, but if we give them to the Lord with thanksgiving, we're saying to him, you be large and in charge of my soul and my mind. And the peace of God that surpasses understanding will guard my heart and my mind in Christ Jesus. Thank you. Almost preached a little on that one. Praise God. Somebody else. Great scriptures. What? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Praise the Lord. And one that comes to my mind about that one, not only did he take our sins, he took our shame. Amen? So the Lord says to you, shame off you. Amen? Because the Lord took the shame that you were trying to bear. So the Lord, the Holy Spirit saying to us, shame off you. There's therefore now, Romans 8, 1, now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And I'm in Christ Jesus. Praise God. And he took my shame. Amen? That's a good one. Somebody else. Praise God. Amen. I can't repeat that one. But yes, amen. <laughs> What's the short version of that for you? What, how did the Lord speak that to you, Don? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of what, Sam? Amen. Praise God. Somebody else. You had one? Yeah. 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 That's a good one. Amen. I love that one too. Praise the Lord. That was a good one. Somebody else. A couple of them. Yeah. 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 Amen. And that's one of our, as, as, as counselors, that's one of our favorite scriptures because it says spirit, soul, and body talks about a triune God, talks about triune people, that we're spirit, soul, and body. And so the Lord is there for us, wants to totally uh, sanctify spirit, soul, and body. Good scripture. I love, I love 2 Thessalonians 5, 23. One more. You, you oh Lord, what? Amen. You, oh Lord, I mean, no, we need that scripture right now. Praise God. Boy, do we ever. Well, hallelujah. Amen. And so those are scriptures, and once we hear them, especially quoted from a heart that's, that, as we all are, needy, uh, it gives us encouragement. It gives us hope, especially when we do it one with another. So, yes, uh, encouragement comes from the encouragement of scriptures. And so uh, I would just encourage you to take a script. Here's what I do. I find a new scripture and I kind of claim it the whole year. 
you know, it's like a brand new and I've never seen before. So I kind of babysit that one and meditate on it the whole year long and let it bring me courage and let it bring me joy. So yes, encouragement comes from one another. Encouragement comes from the God of encouragement, and that's a new one on me. I love it, don't you? He's the God of encouragement. Hallelujah. He wants to encourage us because that's who he is. And the God of encouragement, this is the best part, the same Greek word, kin, kin to each other, the, great, the same Greek word for encouragement is the Greek word for Holy Spirit. He lives in us. Isn't that good? So we're born again with a living hope, and we're born again with the God of encouragement who will never forsake us and never leave us. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so, last but not least, number three, encouragement comes from the encouragement of scriptures, which you've all just quoted. And so, now, now my final point here is, last but not least, there's a reason for all of this. And sometimes we can miss it. And here's the reason. Next slide. From the same scripture. For wherever, whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through encouragement and through the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. Praise God. May the God of encouragement, endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another, right here, in accordance with Christ Jesus, that together we may, with one voice, glorify the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. And it's all April for the glory of God. It's all to say, Lord, you're an awesome God. The chief end of man is to, in, is to glorify God by enjoying him forever. Amen. It's all about the chief end. The, the bottom line of all of it is to glorify the Lord by enjoying him, to glorify the Lord by enjoying his encouragement, his hope, his faith, everything he's given to us that we could not give to ourselves. It's the finished work of the cross. We just go on and on and on. But the last scripture I want to use as kind of a benediction, and then we'll, we're going to talk just a little bit after we shut down here. Okay, let's all say it together. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Thank you so much, and have a great day. Amen.